In a previous video, we learned how to incorporate Prometheus metrics into an Express server with Node.js. Let's create an identical coin flip server using the Fast API library in Python and add custom Prometheus metrics to show how easy it is to monitor code in Python. To start, I opened a folder in VS Code. I put it in this directory and the first file we're going to make is called requirements.txt. We're going to run our Python code with Docker and in order to install the dependencies, we list them here in this requirements.txt file. So I've pasted the dependencies that we need here. Um, we need fast API. This is just some stuff to support fast API as well. And then the Prometheus library as well. Next, let's create a file to hold our Python code. So I'll call it server.py. Um, and the first thing in our Python files, we're going to import some stuff. So random for coin flips, determining heads or tails, fast API dependencies, and then Uvicorn to run the app. Uh, the next thing will be to define our app. It'll just be a fast API object. And then we need to add this middleware. So things like cores works fine. All right, next let's define our coin flip handler. So we just do app.get, we'll call it flip dash coins. Um, it'll take one query parameter called times and that's what is on line 17. Now, if times is not specified or times, which is a string when it arrives at this function as a parameter, we wanna make sure it's a number and it's not empty. We're gonna raise uh, exception, which will return status code 400, which will say, hey, please send times as an integer. After the if statement, if times is in fact a number, then we'll convert it to an integer here on line 23. And then here's our logic for flipping coins. We start with heads being zero. We'll iterate in a for loop as many times as was specified in the request. And this statement here, will return a zero or a one. If it returns a one, this gets evaluated as true and we increment heads by one. And then we can calculate tails after the for loop, which is just the difference between the number of times we flipped coins and the number of times we got heads. Finally, we'll return the result as a JSON object back to the client with heads specifying the number of times it was heads and tails for the number of times it was tails. Finally, let's run our server and we can do it just like this. So if the file gets ran directly, this evaluates the true, and then we'll make use of Uvicorn to run the app on this host IP address, which means listen on all interfaces, and then we're gonna listen on port 5000. Next, let's create a Docker file so we can run the Python code in Docker. So on the left side, I'll make a file called Docker file. First thing I'm gonna do is import this image. This is just a uh, small Python image. Uh, the work directory we'll use, I'll just call it app. The first thing we need to do is copy requirements.txt and then install the dependencies listed in that file. Finally, we'll copy server.py into the container and then we'll run this command which exposes port 5000 and then we'll just run python server.py as the container's entry point. Next, let's create a docker compose yaml file which will run the container for python code, the coin API. So uh, this is just the version of the file we want to use um, inside of this services object. We have one entry coin API um, Container name matches the entry name uh, For build you just specify where the docker file is like this um, This is optional, but we definitely want to expose port 5000 right here. So without further ado um, I'll go ahead and run this so you should just be able to do docker compose up oh, Forgot to save the file. All right, let's do it again. Uh, yep. So it ran um, let's go ahead, let's go back here, let's refresh. Now visiting localhost 5000, I get not found, but if I go to flip coins, like so, and then I'll specify the times as 10, we can see that the JSON object gets returned where heads and tails are reliably around 50%. Well, spoke too soon like that. Uh, let's try again. Yeah, but for the most part, I bet you if I increase this number, um, it'll get closer to 50%, yeah, as you can see. So that's our coin flip server running just fine. Now let's add Prometheus to our project. So coming back here, I'm going to minimize the terminal and then I'm going to make a file on this left side here called Prometheus YAML. And what this is going to do is we're going to configure Prometheus to tell it to look at our Python server to grab the metrics that we create. So the first thing that goes in this file is uh, specifying how often to scrape for metrics. And I'm, we're going to do five seconds just so it stays up to date. Then the next section you want to have is this thing called scrape configs. 
And inside of the scrape configs, we're going to have one entry, which just tells it to look at coin API on port 5000. And so what I mean by that, it looks like this. So specify the job name, and that'll be found at coin API colon 5000, since that's the port that it listens on. And now let's go back to our Docker Compose YAML, and let's paste this entry here for Prometheus. Um, what, I, what this does is it's another entry just similar to our Python server. The image we're using is uh, from the internet called Prometheus. We'll just use the latest uh, restart policy always. Um, for the volumes, I'm mounting the Prometheus file that we just created directly into the Prometheus container. And then I'm just specifying that we want to use that file. And so that we can play around with the dashboard, I'm exposing port 9090. Now let's incorporate custom Prometheus metrics into our Python code. So how to do this, uh, first thing I'm going to do is let's import Prometheus client like so. And then we're going to define a couple metrics in the file. So they get picked up and shown on the Prometheus dashboard. So how to do this um, is you can define a metric like this. So you give it a variable name. Um, you do Prometheus client. In our case, the metric we're going to use is a counter, which will just be like an integer value, which gets incremented over time. Um, inside, the first parameter to this constructor is the metric name, and the second one is some help text. So we'll do a metric for heads count, tails count, and the total number of flips. So next thing I'm going to do is let's just rename this to be tails. And if you're in VS Code, you can highlight heads, do command D or control D, whichever operating system you're on, and just do tails like so. And then I'll come down here and I'll do the same thing for uh, the total. But this time I'll call it uh, flip. Like so. And I'll change this to be plural. All right, we're good. Um, next thing I'm going to do is incorporate the metrics we just defined into the for loop. So to do so, we'll go down here. Um, and right before we return the JSON object, let's increment the counters that we defined above with the integer variables that we have here. So heads will be reflected in the heads count metric, tails, and then the total number of flips will just be used as the integer value th that the client sent. So to recap, you should have used these three metrics right here um, and then define them like so. And then uh, in order for Prometheus to pick up these metrics, we need to add another handler similar to app.get flip coins. We need another handler down here. And what that's going to be is app.getmetrics, like so. And I'll just have a function called getmetrics. And then inside this function, we're going to just return a response object from FastAPI. And the content will be this function that Prometheus Client has built in. And uh, we need to specify text plain so that everything gets formatted correctly when we return it. Now let's test out our code and explore the Prometheus dashboard. So in one terminal here, I have our Docker compose command that we ran a while ago. I want to restart our Python code. So to do this, you can just do Docker compose up build and then give the name of the container that you want to rebuild and Docker compose will only restart that container. In our case, it's coin API and um, it's just corresponding to the name that I put right here. So our coin API will rebuild and notice the logs that we see, this will occur every five seconds. And it's because Prometheus is asking for metrics every five seconds, like we specified in our scrape interval. So that's why it's hitting metrics every single time. And metrics is just returning uh, the latest values of these counters that we defined. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So over here, let's go flip the coins like 10 times. Um, we can see that we have eight and two for heads and tails respectively. Now, if I go to metrics, um, we get this text back, but the key thing to note is in this text, it contains metrics related to just the running process, as well as the custom metrics that we define. So we have heads here, tails here, and flip. And that all corresponds to what we saw earlier, right? Um, if I go back, and let's flip it a thousand more times. When I went back, that was also a request. So I flipped it 10 times and now I just flipped it a thousand more times. So if we go back, we should see 1020. Or I guess 1010, I guess going back didn't request it again. Is that true? Okay, I went back. 
Let's go forward. Yeah, I guess it doesn't request it. Okay, cool. Well, flipped it a thousand times plus 10. And the corresponding flips here are 509 and 501. So pretty reliably 50%. Now that's nice, but looking at metrics through this blob of text can be a little hard. So let's go over to the Prometheus dashboard, which is at localhost 9090. Uh, that's the port that we exposed in the YAML file. Um, and then you can ask for custom metrics in the search bar here like this. So you can do, you see how there's a autocomplete. We can also do a flip count total, execute this. And this corresponds to 1010, what we saw earlier, right? Because Prometheus is scraping the data. Um, this is a little easier of a view. So we can see that over time, the flip count, we flipped it 10 times, right? And then it increased to 1,000. Really nice visual here. So let's make the window here smaller. Uh, let me flip it again. So I just, oh wait, no, no, go back. All right, let's flip this, I don't know, 1,500 times. And then if we execute this query, this should jump up by 1,500 to uh, 20, I don't know, you do the math. There you go. So 2510, right? Pretty cool, right? This is a, uh, this reflects kind of what we expect. Um, and it's tracking our custom metrics over time. Pretty cool. So um, definitely a lot of applications here if you're working with fast API uh, and you want to track various metrics about your service. Um, another cool thing you can do that's built into Prometheus is um, you can keep track of how long your container has been running. So this is a built-in function of Prometheus. It just tells you the epoch time of, you know, whatever time it is. So I guess it's, you know, one, six, eight, eight, whatever. Um, but if you subtract this by, uh, I think it's process start time seconds. Yeah, it'll tell you how long the container has been running for. And um, Prometheus, Prometheus actually picked up the container before we restarted it uh, earlier. So it was already running for about 60 seconds, I guess, um, before I restarted it when I recorded this part. Um, and now the container has been running for about 260 seconds. So if we uh, keep querying, we can see that this number will increase over time. And it's nice, so you can you can uh, keep track of how long your code's been running for. If it's been running for 50 years, you can be like, oh yeah, I'm so cool, look, it never crashed once. If it crashed, you would see the number reset to zero. But yeah, there you have it, Prometheus and Fast API.